Abbott wants to tell everybody what to do. They love telling people what to do, what cars to drive. I think Australians have had enough of governments telling them what to do, frankly. It's tough bringing up children on your own. Karen Griffiths says her life has been made all the more difficult by a welfare trial, which controls the way she can spend her single parent pension. I just have a problem with governments telling people what to do. How has it changed your life? It's drastically changed my life, and not for the better. Karen is one of 6,000 people living between Bundaberg and Harvey Bay, forced onto a cashless debit card two years ago. It means she only gets 20% of her welfare payments in cash. The rest is quarantined to make sure she doesn't spend money on drugs, alcohol or gambling. I trust Australians. They'll make good choices. When you take the people that are already already vulnerable and then you put a draconian policy like this on them, you know, there's going to be fallout. To bring in something that is a blanket approach for everyone and tars everyone with the same brush, oh, you're, you're a junkie, you've got addiction problems, and it's simply not the case. The people I deal with, and this is where I feel they've been targeted, are mostly single parents that have survived domestic violence. Those that have had to fight to get their autonomy back in the first place have now lost it again. Why didn't we wait till there was more data available before we committed for another two years? Uh, well, once again, uh, Corona has thrown a big spanner in the works right across the country, across the world. Uh, I'm for actually having a crack, as are most of the community. Keith Pitt is the federal member for the Bundaberg and Harvey Bay region and one of the driving forces behind bringing the welfare trial to his Queensland electorate. Our study showed that there was not overwhelming community level support. The core factors that underlie addiction problems for people are not being addressed. For the past two years, anyone who's on a cashless debit card can get help at official shop fronts like this community centre here in Bundaberg. Now, we've approached the people who run this centre. We've also approached community leaders who have all declined to comment. Some saying the issue is just too controversial. You're not going to solve unemployment by putting people on a card. You're not going to solve addiction by putting people on a card. You need to actually help them. On your plan to extend the trial of welfare cards in Australia, you're a Liberal government, so your values are meant to be personal liberty, or one of them. Why not make it voluntary for people to sign up to income management if they feel they need some help, instead of making it a compulsory nanny state kind of thing? Well, I'm all in favour of things that work, Lee, and what we want to do is get people off welfare and into work. And what we've found in the trials that we've been doing so far is that this has been helping people. You say you want to back things that work. The Australian National Audit Office report into the trials so far said that the approach to monitoring and evaluation was inadequate. As a consequence, it's difficult to conclude whether there had been a reduction in social harm and whether the card was a lower cost welfare quarantining approach. So the, the Auditor General seems to think that the the um, evidence is out. Well, it seems like we can make some further improvements, but what we do know is that the people who are involved themselves in these communities have, have welcomed them and supported the plan. But, but what are you, and so, what are you, so I'm, I'm happy to keep giving it a go, Lee. Sorry I'm, to interrupt, I, Prime I, Minister, I, but what are you basing that on? Because I'm basing it on the um, Australian National Audit Office report. I'm just wondering what I'm you're basing, basing it on. on the survey, on, on based on the survey of people who have actually participated. People on welfare sometimes already feel a sense of shame about that. Isn't making something like this mandatory instead of opt-in potentially contributing to that sense of shame? No, I don't think it is. I just have a problem with governments telling people what to do. When Karen Griffith spoke to 7.30 in 2019, she complained of not having enough cash for things like second-hand goods. She was embarrassed last year when she couldn't even pay a gold coin entrance fee to a school event. It was quite, quite traumatic for me. Like I felt like a failure as a parent. I, I thought it was incredibly unfair that my kids were being punished for no fault of their own. The government's also proposing drug testing for welfare recipients. Yeah. Illicit drug use has doubled among men in their 50s and 60s in the past 20 or so years. Will yeah. the testing include people receiving welfare in the form of the age pension? And then sadly, um, they won't be able to achieve independence in their retirement and they will be on the pension, which is a welfare payment. The age pension is a welfare payment. The, the pension is a welfare payment. It says the pension is a welfare payment. Receiving a government welfare payment is not the same as being able to keep your own money. That is what we believe in the coalition.
Is it about kicking them off welfare and saving the money from that? I think that's a very unkind way to put it, Lee. We've been talking a bit about Newstart. A single person on Newstart has to live off $277 a week. A federal politician gets an extra $288 per day in travel allowance when they have to go to Canberra. Is that having a fair go and getting a fair go? It's not something we instinctively do. When you're looking at how the government spends money, why is it fair to expect somebody to live off $277 a week when, when at the same time you think it's fair that a politician should get $288 a day just to help with travel costs associated with being in Canberra? Well, you're, you're, you're conflating two completely different things, Lee, so I don't accept the comparison. 170,000 past and present welfare recipients have been sent debt letters, which many people say are inaccurate leaving them to fight a system they say has a reverse onus of proof. I just have a problem with governments telling people what to do. And Human Services Minister Alan Tudge, he made it very clear that he wasn't mucking around. We will find you, we will track you down, and you will have to repay those debts and you may end up in prison. Centrelink introduced an automated debt recovery system that would come to be known as RoboDebt, which is kind of like RoboCop if RoboCop worked in a call centre and hated poor people. If you weren't working, RoboDebt just assumed that you were and that you were hiding all that money that you were definitely earning. <laughs> Silly RoboDebt, you're confusing people on Centrelink payments with multinational corporations. <laughs> RoboDebt took over the job that was previously being done by human beings. Where there used to be a discrepancy, a human being could investigate it and they might easily see the error or the typo that led to the discrepancy and sort it out. But with RoboDebt, any discrepancy resulted in a Centrelink sending out a clarification letter. And that resulted in an increase from 20,000 letters a year to 20,000 a week. So you got this less than perfect algorithm sending out 20,000 letters a week and then sometimes subsequently charging a 10% debt recovery fee. And if Centrelink didn't hear back from you disputing the debt because you missed it or ignored their letters or whatever, they took that to mean that the debt was accurate. In the first 10 months of the last financial year, more than 42 million calls to Centrelink received engaged signals. 42 million. Like this single mother on a low income receiving a debt notice two weeks before Christmas for more than $24,000 because she'd recorded the name of her employer in two different ways. So the automated system read that as her having two different jobs. Centrelink even issued debt notices to people who had died. The impact of robo-debt has been, to put it mildly, full on. In January of the last year, independent MP Andrew Wilkie said the robo-debt system was making some people suicidal. And around the same time, the official Centrelink Twitter account was just referring people to Lifeline. <laughs> Hashtag, don't kill yourself. But apparently Alan Tudge and the government were pretty happy with it. We are not going to scrap the welfare compliance system as the Labor Party suggests. This is the system working as it was intended. In 2016, James Cruz was at work when he got a phone call he'll never forget. A debt collector calling me up telling me, you know, you owe thousands of dollars, $16,000, and... Uh, you have to pay now. The librarian was forced onto a repayment plan. I just have a problem with governments telling people what to do. And for four years, paid back a youth allowance debt he never actually owed. For him and the 430,000 Australians wrongly pursued for more than $1.7 billion in debts generated automatically by the now defunct robo-debt scheme. There has been untold suffering to hundreds of thousands of people. After a lengthy legal battle, the federal court has approved a class action settlement. In a blistering judgment, Justice Bernard Murphy said RoboDebt had exposed a shameful chapter in the administration of the social security system and a massive failure of public administration, which, he acknowledged, caused financial hardship, anxiety and distress, and in some cases, suicide. To put it in perspective, $11,500 to me back then was six months' worth of wages. It was a lot of money. While the government refuses to accept legal liability, Justice Murphy's judgment makes it clear the Commonwealth unlawfully asserted the debts. And yet... No senior public servant has lost their job. No minister has lost their job. 
Robodebt was found to be illegal in November 2019, but it took the government another six months to scrap it and begin repaying the debts it had already recouped. Will be reduced to zero. I'm angry about the lack of accountability. The settlement will cost taxpayers at least $1.8 billion in what the judge described as a huge waste of public money. He said it should have been obvious to those in power that the automated debt recovery scheme targeting some of the most vulnerable Australians was flawed long before it was abandoned. The United Nations has taken aim at two of Australia's welfare policies, questioning the legality of Centrelink's robo-debt scheme and use of cashless welfare cards. The UN special reporter pointed to evidence showing high rates of error in the robo-debt scheme, warning new technology could usher in a digital welfare dystopia. The findings are a part of a UN report into welfare systems around the world. Philip Alston the, from the UN says Australia's system is a fiasco and fails to take into account real life situations. The Prime Minister has been accused of having blood on his hands for blocking Australians trapped in COVID-ravaged India from returning home. I just have a problem with governments telling people what to do. The stunning takedown from cricketing great Michael Slater comes as Scott Morrison defended the government's controversial ban, denying claims the decision is racist. Do you have blood on your hands? Wake up. No, it's obviously absurd. The problem you have here, Prime Minister, the optics of threatening your own people with jail and huge fines is not a good one. Well, these are the tools that we have available to us under the Biosecurity Act. It's not getting any better in India. In fact, it's, it's mm. getting worse. Um, and jailing and fining returning Aussies, um, I mean, as a sitting Prime Minister, it's incredibly heartless.